All right, in this video, we review how complex numbers are introduced, and we also review how to derive the quadratic formula. Okay, let's start. To begin with, let's consider this simple linear equation. 3x is equal to 12. And 3 and 12 here, they are both natural numbers. Okay, and if we solve this by dividing both sides by 3, we have x equal to 4, which is also a natural number. So here, everything, the coefficient 3, 12, and the solution 4, they are all natural numbers. So this system is closed within the set of natural numbers. Right? However, consider the next equation. Let's say 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. Again, these coefficients 2 and 4, they are natural numbers. However, if we solve this equation, we have x equals to negative 2, which is not a natural number, but it is an integer, or negative integer. So in this way, in order to solve a linear equation, we have to expand the set from natural numbers to integers. And furthermore, uh, let's consider this equation, uh, 2x plus 3. And of course, uh, 2 and 3 are again natural numbers. However, uh, the solution x is equal to negative 3 over 2, which is not a natural number or integer, but it is a rational number. Okay, again, we had to expand the set of numbers here from natural numbers to integers to rational numbers. In general, if we want to solve a linear equation like this, ax plus b is equal to uh, zero, where a and b are rational numbers, and a is non-zero, then the general solution of this linear equation is x equal to negative b over a. And since we are assuming that a and b are rationals, so the solution negative b over a is also a rational number. So this means as long as the coefficients are rational, the solutions are always within the set of rational numbers. So we don't need any more uh, new numbers in this case. By the way, uh, we call this equation a linear equation. Be linear means there is only the term x, not any nonlinear terms such as x squared or square root of x or x cubed or whatever. We just have simple plain x here in this equation. So it's called linear. So linear means uh, so linear means line-like, right? So this is uh, this represents a kind of line in the plane. So if we if you plot this uh, function y equal to a x plus b on the two-dimensional plane xy plane, then it's it represents a straight line, right? Ax plus b is equal to y. So this intercept is b, and the slope is a, right? So 1a, for example. So it's called linear. So it's line-like. Next, consider nonlinear equations. Uh, a simple nonlinear equation is something like x squared is equal to 2. Okay, Since we have x squared, uh, if you plot the graph of y equal to x squared, it's not a line. It's something like this. It's a curve. It's not a line, so it's a, it's a nonlinear equation. Okay, so what's the solution of this equation? And as you can solve this by just taking the square root of both sides, 
and we have both negative and uh, positive square roots so x is equal to plus minus square root of 2 although this 2 and the coefficient actually is it's 1 so coefficients 1 and 2 are both natural numbers or rational numbers the solution this one is not rational yeah, it's it's an they are irrational numbers so we need to consider the set of real numbers that includes irrational numbers in addition to rational numbers so in this way in order to solve a nonlinear equation in general we need more than rational numbers and in this case we need real numbers next let's consider a little bit more general uh, quadratic equation uh, first we define a function f of x uh, from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. Uh, we define f of x as, say, 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. So we define the function. So uh, if you, you should try to draw the uh, uh, graph of this function. So it looks something like this, I think. Uh, maybe something like this. Uh, I don't know exact, exactly, but uh, you should try. Anyway, so solving a quadratic equation or, or solving an equation in general means that to find a set of uh, real numbers mm. or set of numbers such that f of x is equal to 0, it's satisfied. So to write it more generally, we, by solving an equation, we mean finding the set of numbers, uh, usually real numbers, such that uh, f, uh, so set of alphas, where alpha is a real number, and f of alpha is equal to zero. So finding this set means solving this equation. Okay, f of x is equal to 0 means this one is equal to 0. By the way, you may already know the formula for finding the solutions for a quadratic equation, right? So in this case, if we have this, the solution of this equation will be, uh, let's see, that will be 5 plus minus square root of uh, 25 minus... Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 2. So 5 plus minus 24 minus, uh, 25 minus 8 is what, 17, and over 4. So that, so if you substitute these numbers into this equation, then the result will be 0. Okay, so let's derive this formula for the general case. So here's the theorem. The solutions, okay, for the quadratic equation, let's say ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, and where a, b, c are all real numbers. And a is non-zero, so this is important. You know, otherwise, if a is zero, then this term will disappear. So we have only a linear equation. Okay. So this equation has has no solutions if uh, b squared minus four ac is less than zero and has solutions uh, that is negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a uh, if if uh, b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero so let's prove this formula and uh, proof. Okay, suppose alpha, which is real, 
is a solution. Okay, we first assume some real number alpha is a solution. Okay, then uh, since this is a solution, that means a alpha squared, if we substitute alpha into x, we have this equation, b alpha plus c is equal to zero. Okay, now, uh, since by assumption a is non-zero, uh, here a is non-zero, uh, uh, divide everything by a. Uh, uh, wait, wait. A is non-zero, so I divide by a, and we have alpha squared plus b over a alpha. Let's move this c to uh, the left-hand side. So subtract c from both sides, and we have this. Okay. Now let's uh, complete the square of this part. Okay. So if you remember uh, this formula, a plus b squared a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So, so this a squared corresponds to this one, and this alpha corresponds to this a here. Okay. So this 2 times b should correspond to this one. Okay. But we have no 2. So why don't we just multiply by 2 and divide by 2? Okay. So we have this part, but this part is missing. So let's add this part to both sides. So then we have alpha squared plus two uh, alpha, uh, just swap the order here, b over two a uh, plus, so this b squared corresponds to this b over two a here. So that will be b over 2a squared, okay, so equals to c over minus c over a plus, we add the same thing to both sides. So we have this, okay. So since this is equal to a plus b squared, so this entire thing will be alpha plus this thing, b over 2a, squared okay and let's expand this one and we have minus c over a uh, plus b squared over 4a squared okay and uh, let's uh, rearrange this part a little bit so multiply uh, so f we have 4a squared here, and we have a, so let's use the common denominator, 4a squared. That means we have to multiply 4ac plus b squared. Okay, uh, let's sw swap the order here. b squared minus 4ac here. Okay, now... Uh, Let's, so we have a square here, complete square, and let's make this completed square, okay? So that means square root of this, right? For a square, and uh, plus minus, actually. Because the sign doesn't, ma sign will disappear if we square it. So if we square this thing, we have this, okay? So therefore, if we take the square root of both sides, we have alpha plus b over 2a equals to plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. Uh, so plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over, so square root of 4 a squared is 2a plus minus, okay? But we already have plus minus here, so 
we can consider all combinations. So plus times plus is plus, plus times minus is minus, minus times plus is minus, minus times minus is plus. So either way, we only have either plus or minus. Okay, there are there are four possible combinations, but the outcome is only two possibilities, plus or minus. So we have just two a here. Now add uh, subtract from both sides b over 2a then we have alpha is equal to minus so this will disappear and we have negative b over 2a plus minus this now uh, we have 2a here 2a here so we can just combine them so minus b plus minus 4ac over 2a. And we are done, almost. So in the beginning, we assumed that alpha is a solution. So if alpha is a solution, then alpha should be this. Okay. Now we need to check that this alpha, thus obtained alpha, is indeed the solution by substituting this into the original equation. But that should be easy. Just uh, follow uh, these steps backwards. and uh, Or you can just substitute this thing into the original equation to show that this equation indeed holds. And then we are done. Uh, wait a minute. We are not done. OK, so <laughs> when taking the square root here, we were assuming that this thing is positive or zero. Okay. Otherwise, uh, there's you know, it's nonsense to take the square root. So this is possible if this inside this is positive or zero. So if b squared minus four ac is non-negative. So otherwise. If uh, this uh, factor is negative, then uh, no solutions. Okay, so don't forget this. And we're done. So as you can see, if this is the case. So b squared minus 4ac is negative, then we have no solutions. But uh, so what happens then? Uh, it, there's no solution. That means uh, as long as we consider the solutions are real. Okay. So to solve this equation, even for this case, okay, even for this case, we introduce the imaginary unit. Okay, so n no real numbers becomes negative when squared. Okay, so if x is a real number, then x squared is always non-negative. Okay, but we formally define that uh, some strange number, square root of one. Okay, just so we don't know what this means exactly yet, but we just, you know, just formally define such a number and name it as i, uh, imaginary unit. Uh, unit. Okay. Then uh, we have i squared is equal to negative one. Okay, so if we introduce this, then at least formally we can solve uh, the quadratic equation for the case where b squared minus 4ac is negative. Okay, that means so so b squared minus 4ac is negative, then that means uh, negative b squared for ac is positive, right? So we can consider the square root of that. And uh, the solution will be 
so the solution for the case where uh, uh, this is negative uh, would be minus b plus minus i this and uh, over to a okay so this will be the solution of the quadratic equation, quadratic equation when uh, this is the case okay but this is just formally introduced and uh, we don't know what that means exactly so from the next video we uh, try to construct the system of complex numbers from scratch okay uh, that's all for this video uh, see you later